Hey everybody, Enders here. I'm making this video just because a lot of people have been asking me uh, while I'm streaming, Hey, Enders, how do you like the game? Hey, Enders, should I buy the game? What are the problems with it? Blah, 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 blah. You know, all that stuff. Just basic questions. And my default response has always just been, you know, oh, it's rough. Oh, if you want to play the game, you can play the game. It's really rough, blah, blah, blah. But I want to go into full detail here. I'm going to do this uh, intentionally unscripted because I feel that will really demonstrate just how many problems are actually in the game that I can recall off the top of my head. But before we get into the full video here, thank you guys so much for hitting 13,000 subscribers. I seriously do appreciate it. And if you're planning on following Battlefield 2042 as a game, hit the subscribe button and turn notifications on so you don't miss an upload. I plan on uploading settings videos, weapon exclamation videos, the whole nine yards. So I think you guys will really enjoy the channel. And as always, hit the like button. It really does help the channel out. So, when answering the question of whether or not you should buy Battlefield 2042, for some people it's very simple, they're gonna buy the game regardless, and for other people it's more complex. This video is kind of more for the people that are on the fence, or curious as to what the game's problem are, maybe they don't pay attention to the game that much and they just, you know, had stuff to do and couldn't really keep up on what's actually going on with the game. So, right off the bat, one of the largest problems with the game is the game runs very, very poorly. It is extremely poorly optimized. If you have a lower-end PC and you're not okay with running the game with potentially under 60 FPS at 1080p, I would absolutely stay away from this game. It destroys even the highest-end computers. I'm very lucky to have an RTX 3090 Asus Strix OC. Pretty much some of the best memory timings you can get on AMD systems on a 5950X. And I, I pull about 120 to 160 frames depending on what's going on. Now, that's playable FPS, but you have to remember, my computer is over $4,000, and that's not that great. And some people don't have that kind of money to spend on a computer. So if you're not okay with terrible performance, this game is not for you. Another massive problem is hit registration. Hit registration in this game is among the worst I've ever seen in any video game. Forget the Battlefield franchise. I've never seen worst hit registration like this. It is pretty much RNG as to whether or not your bullets hit people when you actually go and shoot them. And you will absolutely die to it. You will lose gunfights that you would have won because of it. You will not get kills that you would have gotten because of it. And it is absolutely a constant while playing the game. Uh, just while we're on the topic of hit rag, I guess this kind of ties into this as well. Server performance recently has been quite laggy. Um, the rubber banding issues has been brought up all over Twitter and Twitch and YouTube, all that stuff. Um, they actually disabled sensor grenades in an attempt to try to figure out if they were causing the lag. And I have to admit, the servers that when I played today were way less rubber bandy than yesterday. So that might be onto something. It could be something with like the amount of gadget spam that's going on. But as of right now, the servers are still quite laggy. Contrary to popular opinion, it seems, I think people are misplacing their concerns here. The gunplay is excellent. It's just that the hit reg and the spread, the over-exaggerated spread on some of the weapons, uh, is actually kind of destroying the gunplay. If they do manage to fix those issues, the gunplay is, in my opinion, the best ever in the franchise. But it's dice we're talking about here, so we can't exactly hope for them to pull some miracle of game design and miraculously fix everything that's wrong with the game. As far as gameplay bugs, let's just see how many I can remember off the bat. Okay, so there's a permadeath bug that you have to leave the game to fix. There are multiple input bugs. The game does not like multiple imp inputs uh, being inputted into the game at a quick succession. Say you're trying to heal in armor plate and like prone you pretty much have to very deliberately do those action in a very, very, like, measured way just to kind of baby the game into taking them all. There are spawning bugs that render you unable to shoot, switch weapons, or jump. There is a bug where you spawn and crouch. You are stuck in a permanent crouch state and renders it so you can't shoot, and you also have to leave the game. Using McKay's grapple hook, you can actually currently grapple onto smoke and leaves of plants, which is pretty interesting. The helicopter zoom while in the cockpit is actually broken right now. When you go to zoom, it actually zooms out, which I, 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 I kind of find that pretty funny because it's doing the exact opposite thing it's supposed to be doing. Harking back to when I was talking about the input bugs, sometimes uh, the game absolutely refuses to allow you to parachute and you will fall to your death. 
that has killed me multiple times, and it's pissed me off a lot when playing the game too. So I think you get the idea. The point is there is a multitude of bugs, and I left out probably hundreds, which is very concerning. Uh, jumping over to, like, game mode slash maps slash maybe portal a little bit. So, Conquest, I haven't set foot on. Uh, if you follow the channel for a long time, you will know why, but just, it, there might be a lot of new people watching this video, so I tend to like, you know, fast-paced infantry combat slash vehicle gameplay, and the maps in Battlefield 2042 for me on Conquest are simply too large. And to my surprise, this is actually becoming a popular opinion in the community and before battlefield 2442 release i was getting a lot of shit for saying the maps would be too big well look where we are now so conquest is not my cup of tea in this game uh breakthrough i find to be a lot more playable but i'm telling you right now some of these breakthrough designs some of the way the points are laid out and some of the ways uh the the team spawn is very problematic for instance on kaleidoscope and breakaway You'll be, uh, let's say there'll be two teams, right? The attacking and defending team. The defending team will spawn literally in the middle of the open with no cover while the enemy team also gets to spawn at the same time, right? The problem with this is, guess who's in the middle of the open when the enemy attack helicopter comes over and kills your entire fucking team? That's right, guys. The defending team. I have probably personally killed the entire defending team with my attack helicopter buddies uh, like four or five times now at the very start of the game. I wouldn't be surprised if I've directly caused some game refunds. As far as some poor point layouts, there are very problematic point layouts on maps like Orbital and Kaleidoscope Breakthrough where they just slap a point on top of a skyscraper and the only way to access that skyscraper is zipline helicopter, or maybe you jump out of your transport vehicle on your team and try to float down onto the 32 people on waiting for you on top of the skyscraper. I think you guys get the point here. Uh, there's just terrible point layouts in Breakthrough sometimes, and you'd be surprised how many games are literally just ended because you can't get that point on top of the skyscraper. Their entire team's on top of it, and not even an attack helicopter can clear it, because there's quite literally 15 or 20 stingers protecting that point. And for those of you that are wondering if there's TDM, Domination, Squad Conquest, basically smaller modes in the base game, meeting outside of Portal, they are no longer in the game. The base game has two game modes, Conquest and Breakthrough. To play any of those smaller modes, you actually have to play Portal. And Portal is actually very impressive. I like Portal a lot. And I think Portal will pretty much single-handedly keep the game alive or at least keep people's interest in the game alive for a, a quite a long time because I've seen some very cool experiences made in Portal. I have saw someone made Gun Game. I saw someone made a, an Infection mode. People have brought back classics like No Shark Canal TDM 24-7. Uh, you know, they, they've played 1942 Rush, stuff like that. So, Portal is a winner in my book, and I think a lot of people are going to enjoy it. Oh, uh, actually, I forgot off the top of my head, there's actually a mouse input bug in this game. Uh, the mouse input in this game is bugged worse than any game I've ever seen in my entire life. My buddy Baranox actually made sort of like a, kind of a band-aid tutorial fix video, but the mouse input is still absolutely bugged at a fundamental level. My friend Baranox who made the video seems to think the mouse input is attempting to emulate controller input because controller settings actually affect mouse settings, which is definitely not how that worked in previous Battlefield games. So to keep this video short, uh, I could go on for probably 50 minutes. Should you buy Battlefield 2042 in its current state? I think the answer is pretty obvious for most people. No, in my opinion, you should avoid buying Battlefield 2042. If you would like to try it, I believe EA Play or something, you can get a good deal on it and play the game for about 10 hours or something. I would go that route if you want to try the game. As far as buying the game, if you're not a Twitch streamer slash YouTuber who consistently plays this game and has a community built around it, I would avoid this game. Maybe wait three, four, five, six months, see how it is. And yeah, that's my final verdict as of right now. Battlefield 2042 officially releases for everyone that did not pre-order the game on November 19th. So that is, as of right now, two days. Apparently, there's going to be a patch when the game comes out, and we can only hope that they fix something important in that patch. So if you liked the video, hit the like button. If you liked the video, hit the subscribe button, and make sure to turn notifications on. 
I'm Enders. I will see you guys later. Peace.